It's an 86 and a half. <laughs> Nissan hard body. They sold a lot of hard bodies just a few years before this one when they called them Datsuns. These, they switched to call them hard bodies because they have double wall in the back and they're pretty solid built vehicles. And the proof of how solid this thing is, most of it's still original. This has got the V6 engine in it. The big bash against these hard bodies especially the old ones was like a horsepower the old ones had like 80 horsepower to the rear wheels okay this one's got like about 180 so it's got a lot more power and since it's got a camper on it you really need it but with this v6 engine it can tow he's hooking up a little coffee trailer i'm gonna do a business in probably close to 2,000 pounds with all the crap in it and it won't have any problems towing it. the interesting thing about this is it looks like it has a carburetor. See, it's got the big old air filter that carburetors have, but voila, no. It has the old fashioned throttle body fuel injection. So even though this is old, 1986 and a half, it's fuel injected. You don't have to deal with all that crap of carburetors because the later model carburetors, right before they made this fuel injection system, had so much ridiculous electronics and anti-pollution equipment. When they got old, none of them would run that well. This. It's fuel injected. It still runs quite well. Similar to the Americans when they went to their throttle body. This is Nissan's take. But it still runs perfectly fine. And this one, as you can see, is a 4x4. Most guys want to get a 4x4, especially if they got a camper top. They're going to go hunting, camping. And yes, as you can see, this is a real four-wheel drive vehicle. Here's the five-speed standard tranny. Your four-wheel drive two-wheel high four-wheel high neutral and four-wheel low while we're in here you can see it's a pretty basic vehicle it's got the little back seat now <laughs> at least they had the common sense of putting it sideways because if they put it the other way you couldn't have any legs at least this way there's room for somebody you can stretch your legs out somebody sits on the other side here you're gonna have feet in your face no ac on this baby cold is just outside air <laughs> The heater still works though. Now they call them hard bodies because basically they do have pretty hard bodies. They're pretty well made. This thing spent its entire life in Colorado before it moved to Tennessee and look. The frame is still solid. It's not rotting away. You saw in the roads in Colorado for sure. Now he didn't have to replace the center shaft on the drive shaft because it had rotten over time. You expect that with the car but I mean, you look at the frame and all the suspension parts, they're still in pretty good shape. And it's got a massive solid rear end because, of course, most of them were just rear wheel drive cars. They made those for years, but this four wheel drive, so you're not going to get stuck anywhere. And this is the advantage of old technology. The modern four wheel drives or all wheel drives, they're computer controlled. They're insanity to fix when they break, and break they do. This has what? A gear shift. You can't make it any simpler than that. Two wheel high, four wheel high, neutral, and four wheel low. You don't have to worry about, gee, it won't engage. Well, you're grabbing it and engaging it yourself. No computers, no electronic motors. Simple stuff that could last forever if you take care of it. And yes, all technology means you gotta work more cause it's got the lockers here. When you put it into four wheel driving, when you use the front, you gotta lock them and unlock them. It's not that big of a deal. Realize the modern ones, again, it's all done by computers and servos. They break, they cost a fortune to fix. This is a very simple system. And then people say, in my new one, I just push a button and it goes into four wheel drive, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, when it works. And I mean, hey, if you're going in four wheel drive and you're going into rough terrain, it's probably a good idea to get out, put the lockers on and Look around and see what you're looking at. Don't just push a button and go flying into the wilderness. You might go flying off a cliff if you don't watch it. Now we'll go back under the hood. It's Nissan's V6 engine. They made millions of these things. As you can hear. Touch right up. Now this one idles a tad too high because somebody fiddled with the screw on it and it's a throttle body you're really not supposed to mess with that but you can see how smooth the engine is it doesn't make much noise other than the fan whirring because yes it's got a mechanical fan there it is again we're talking simple mechanical reliability instead of an electric fan a mechanical one that runs off the fan belt yes they get slightly worse gas mileage 
maybe, I don't know, a quarter of a mile a gallon at most. Hardly anything, really. It's just simplicity. The stuff can last a long time. It is just more long term than any electronic stuff. Electronics are always going to break. Physical stuff can last forever. And yeah, the front bumper could need a repainting, but interestingly enough, when you get to the back, the chrome still is in decent shape. Bring back the days of chrome. And since it's got a top, we'll look inside. There's an awful lot of room inside here. And like I said, they call them hard bodies because they have double wall construction in here. These things are solid as can be. Of course, these aren't the original rims, but they came with a vehicle. But the tires have kind of a funny story. When he bought it originally in 98, it had the famous exploding Firestone tires on it. So he got money in the settlement and he replaced them with much better tires. He has a Goodrich TAKL tires on it and they lasted quite some time, but he doesn't drive it that much. So he wanted to get them rotated a while ago and the guy said, I'm not rotating those tires, they're all dry rotted, which of course they were. Then he replaced them with these, but he did get rid of the exploding Firestones before they exploded while he was driving down the road. Close the hood, take it for a spin. Not sure. The dash ain't what it used to be. It's all cracked up, but it's a hard body. These six cylinders, they still work. No horrible rattling noises or piston knock. Still runs great. And these are a hard body with a camper on it. High up in the air, four wheel drive. Sure, it rides kind of like a boat, but that's how these old pickup trucks ride. And the brakes, we had them on. They work perfectly good. Got a little bit of pull to the left, but I mean, hey, it's old. And sometimes when you turn the power steering, kind of sounds like a goose honking away, but it still works, it's still got power assist. There goes the goose honking away. Now it's by no means a drag race truck, but here we go, our little drag strip. Let's see what it can do. One, two, three. Not exactly awe-inspiring, but it gets down the road. And with the four-wheel drive ability, you're not gonna get stuck in this thing. Well, the gears work perfectly fine. We'll put it in fifth gear. No problem getting in gear, smooth shifts. High old truck for cruising on the countryside. Or going into the countryside with the four wheel drive. Not that many of these left to buy, but hey, you never know. You might find an old barn find. And if you do, hey, go out and buy it. If you don't mind goose sound and power steering and creaks here and there, I do have to say though, if you look at one of these, get a V6 engine in them, they're a lot smoother. They got a lot more power if you do any kind of serious driving, especially off road. So what I have to say about this old antique? Well, antiques often were better made. It can last a really long time. Now this baby was made 14 years before Renault took over Nissan and pretty much single-handedly drove the company into a giant cliff over the edge and it's been falling ever since. And the Japanese controlled the company and made some really good vehicles like this. It's a shame they don't make them like that anymore, but they used to make really good vehicles that could run a really long time. And they made an awful lot of them. So like I say, you find one of these in a barn and it runs, hey, snap it up. It'll probably outlast the new crap that they're making. You might not know what the heck a T100 is, so I'm gonna tell you. Toyota decided in the 90s they were gonna make bigger trucks. Instead of just their little bitty trucks, they're gonna make bigger trucks. Not as big as F-150s, but a lot bigger than their previous versions. So they decided in Japan only to make these T100s. They're all made in Japan, but strangely enough, they never sold them in Japan. It was for the US market, but they're all made in Japan. This guy picked this one up pretty cheap and he's had the bodywork all done over. Now you can see on the sticker here, it says a 97, but this, these parts are from a different vehicle. <laughs> the vehicle itself is a 96. The regular VIN number will show you that. That's the real one that belongs on a truck. Now, after making these things about five years, they decided we're gonna go even bigger and we're gonna make T-150s. Well, guess what happened? Ford Motor Company sued them and said, you can't call them T-150s. We have F-150s. Like, wait a second. T's and F's are different letters, right? Uh, how the heck 
could you say you own the rights to the number 150? Doesn't make any sense at all, right? I mean, you see 1500s this, 1500s that from different companies. Why? They couldn't, but they didn't like it. And Toyota didn't want to make a big stink so. Instead, they called them Toyota Tundras instead of T-150. Now, this was the first big size one, the T-100, all made in Japan. The T-150s are, as you know them, the Tundras, they're all made in the United States originally. They made them in the forklift factory that they used to make Toyota forklift trucks in, in Indiana. Then they moved it all to San Antonio, Texas, where they still make the Tundras. Now, these T-100s, Basically it came with two styles. You could get a four cylinder or a six. Now this is a six. So I'll open it up. And you can see it's got a 3400 four cam V6 engine. These are extremely, extremely reliable engines. You can see he's had a timing belt changed in 2008. And now it's 237,000 miles on it. It doesn't burn any oil. Now if you are looking at one of these and you want a configuration like this, this is a four-wheel drive one. You really want to get the V6 engine. They did make them with four-cylinder engines, and just a little bit too underpowered. This one is perfectly fine. It's not a race truck, but you're not going to get stuck with a four-wheel drive. These engines can basically run forever. And you can see it's still got the original power steering pump and the original air conditioning compressor and yes, it still blows cold. It's a Toyota. That's why they decided to make these trucks. In Japan, they're not big on pickup trucks, and neither were they in Europe. They make these exclusively for the American market. Now really, they're not competing against Ford, GM, Dodge, the Tundras, until they went last year to the stupid V6 twin turbo. When they had the V8 engines and the Tundras, they were unbeatable trucks. Now with that V6 and the turbo, I've seen problems with them. I don't like them, but the old ones, they would just run for ever. Toyota didn't care about keeping up with all the bells and whistles and superficial plastic hoopla that Dodge and Ram and GM and Ford is always, who's got the bigger tailgate? Who's got a tailgate that does 57,000 things, right? No, they just made solid, reliable trucks that could run forever, and this is obviously one of them. Now, I've lived in Massachusetts his whole life, so as I said, all this stuff was rotten off. So he's had all this replaced with used parts from around the world. Now, if you know a lot about these things, you'll notice this is a little bit shorter bed than you're normally going to see. Well, it's because it came from another truck. <laughs> and it was put on this truck because the other one was all rotten off. But as we look under, we will see. Check it out. This frame is rock solid. Now, he's had it all clean and weatherproof so it won't rot anymore. But this is a 1996. This was a long time before Toyota trucks that had rotten frame. My son had a Tacoma, it had a rotten frame. A lot of people have brought me Tacomas and Tundras that did have some rotten frames. The salt would eat them up. For some reason, Toyota originally put a pretty good coating on it. But then, for a few years, they did a crappy job coating it. They used the wrong kind of coating, I don't know. Maybe they tried something new and it didn't work. And a lot of the frames rotted. This thing is rock solid. Normally, you're not gonna have to worry about a 96 having a rotten frame. Oh, he's going there to check, but you can hear this thing is rock solid. The reason that the other parts had to be replaced because the fenders and stuff were all bashed in, then they rust, and that's a lot thinner, not coated as well as the frame. The frame's what you worry about. As he found, you can get parts for these things all over the place. It's a Toyota. He went all over the place, got that nice little top for it too, used for 500 bucks. And interesting enough, it's just tall enough that he can get his four-wheeler in there. And he said, they don't leak. It's totally sealed and it doesn't leak when it rains. He did buy fancy wheels and fancy tires because hey he's turned this old truck into a really nice truck now he's got these big wheels it's four-wheel drive and it's got big v6 engine he says he gets between 10 and 13 miles a gallon 13 on a good day you're thinking about getting bigger tires loading your truck up just realize gas mileage is going to go down this aggressive tire pattern you're not going to get stuck especially with four-wheel drive but all that tire equals all that friction all that friction equals crappier gas mileage <laughs> so realize that i mean it's a nice truck it's going to get bad gas mileage that's just how they work and the funny thing is one of the reasons toyota went to their tundra being v6 with twin turbos because they said well we got to do something about that gas mileage right well a friend of mine bought one of those brand new tundras last year in tennessee you know what he told me he said i'm going to get rid of this truck because it gets horrendous gas mileage he used it 
to tow his business, which is like a taco stand, right? So he spent all that money on a brand new Tundra that had the V6 twin turbo that they say gets great gas mileage. He actually got worse gas mileage than he was getting with his old V8. Because when you're pulling weight, you need a lot of torque. So he bought this nice truck. He loved the look of the truck, but he said the gas mileage is horrible on the thing. And Toyota said, oh, there's nothing we can do. We looked at it, it's fine. They don't get the rating that they say they do when they're towing, just like the B of Ford and their F-150 Lightning Electric pickup where they say, oh, it can go 200 something miles. Yeah, I saw a guy tow his boat 90 miles and he was almost completely out of electricity. So don't listen to any of those ratings. You need to tow, to pull. You want a big V8 engine, right? And in this case, these never came with V8s. It's the T100. The T150s that they actually never produced but called them Tundras. They came with V6s in the beginning and V8s. Then eventually they were all V8s and then now they went back to V6s which as far as I'm concerned is a mistake for a big truck. They didn't screw up on this one. It's a 96 and it still runs like a clock. We'll start it up. Okay. 236,000 miles. The only thing I hear is a little bit of cam noise. You're always going to hear a little bit of cam noise on an engine with that kind of mods. Doesn't burn oil, runs perfectly fine. He changes the oil regularly, takes care of it. These things can last forever. Now we'll see if it makes a liar out of me as I hook up the scan tool. Now I'm trying out this new X tool scan tool. They gave me one before and it had a lot of problems and they admitted they had bad software. So here's a new one with upgraded software. That thing is called IP. 819 TPMS diagnostic system. And here we go. It's ramping itself up. Now this is an old, it's a 96. We're gonna have to do it manually. Put the dead in manually because it's too old. There's no auto reader that's gonna read something this old. Communicating is gonna be pretty slow. These old vehicles are a lot slower. The computers are much slower than the modern ones, but they still should give us some decent data. You can see by the flashing green light, it's working, it's sending information out. It's only 66% done now, but it's old and slow. Just like me. While we're waiting for the slow communication, check out this little garbage can. It's cool. Look. Push. And guess what? It won't communicate. It fails to communicate. So I have to say this X tool, it fails. I tried it earlier on my wife's matrix and it wouldn't work on that. They said they'd fix the software and I tried it and it did communicate. So they did fix that software, but this is the second vehicle I used at it. Now this one, it won't read it. So I would stay far away from this particular tool until they perfected. It's too much beta software that doesn't operate. It went the whole way through the whole system and then it says fails to communicate. So we'll get something better. We'll get an oldie that I know is going to work. So I get my dirty old Nova. You can see paints on and everything, but let's plug this baby in. I'll do the same part, lit up, and you can see this is auto linking. So we will do, this is any trouble codes. Now checking out the data. We'll start her up. And you can see no powertrain, DTCs or freeze frame data. It doesn't have any trouble codes. And now we'll look at live data. We'll start her up. Check it out, short term fuel trim is 0%. Okay, as you can see, this thing's got 236,000. 276 miles on it and the short term fuel term is zero meaning it's running perfectly <laughs> ignition timing's good the airflow sensor's good oh the short term fuel term went to 0 0.8 so it's going between 0 0 0.8 every once in a while it bounces to minus two it's still hardly nothing on a vehicle this old close the hood Take it for a spin. The four-wheel drive system is all manual. No electronic crap. You pull it in gear. Of course, there's no backup camera, but hey, it's a pickup truck. Now, he did go a little bit too big on the tires because you can hear them. They're rubbing a little. Sometimes you put two big tires on, you're going to rub when you do a big turn. So I'll try to keep away from doing big turns here. <laughs> it's a truck, so it's certainly going to go over my bump here relatively easily. And away we go. Four-wheel drive, nice and high up in the air. It is an old truck, it's a 96, right? It's got a solid frame. Now, of course, it's not gonna be the smoothest riding thing in the world. It's an old truck. <laughs> and it's lifted, and it has gigantic tires in it too. So, it still runs perfectly fine, but it's not gonna be smooth riding like the more modern ones are. We come out to deal with Friday afternoon traffic. Here we go, we'll look around. And here comes Friday traffic. Everybody in Newport gets off early on Friday. They're rushing to get a drink or something. Look at them all. But it looks like there's an opening. So here we go. We'll step on it. And it 
Look at storms. Do you see that smooth ship? This thing may have 236,000 miles on it. Still shifts like a dream. Engine still got about the same power it had in the beginning. Mind you, this is kind of a Frankenstein truck, because like I said, it's got a different bed on the back, different side. It's even got a somewhat different cab on it, too, because <laughs> a lot of the stuff had rusted up from hit, being hit and assault on the road eating up, but it did not touch the frame, like I said. The frame's still solid as can be, and he was smart. He had it all cleaned off and then coated and rubberized so it won't rot in the future. Okay, it's got all this mileage, but how does it idle? Well, there's a V6 that's still smooth, extremely smooth. Filming one-handed, so I don't want to corner too fast. Plus, that tire will rub some because he's got a little bit too big tires on it. You can see he's having his own little camera here so he can see front and back. There it is. You can easily add this stuff yourself. Why buy another vehicle when you can buy a camera? It was Toyota's first attempt at making a bigger truck. And considering that this 96 is still running like a clock, I'd say that they did a pretty good job the first time. If you do want to get one of these, I do advise getting a V6 engine, not the four. Especially if you're going four-wheel drive, if you want to tow anything. Now you know what a Toyota T100 is. A little history lesson, but history that's still going down the road. This is an 81 F100. Even though it says F150, somebody just stuck that on as a laugh. Now when I say cheap, I mean really cheap. The owner just bought this for $2. Yes, $2. And it runs. Now granted, he bought it from his father, who bought it from his grandfather. And the grandfather did pay a whopping $300 for it ages ago. It had been sitting in a field for years. But he got it running and drove it home. Now the reason I say it's a good cheap work truck is under the hood. Because under the hood is a 300 cubic inch straight six cylinder Ford engine. Now they're not insane horsepower. They go anywhere from about 100 to 175 horsepower. But they got a lot of low end torque for pulling stuff. So much so that Ford actually put them in dump trucks. You see them in all kinds of things. Wood chippers, dump trucks, you name it. Well this one is an F100 truck that it came with in 1981. And check it out. It's a typical rolling 300 straight six. They got a little roll to them, but they can run four ever and everything under her is simplicity itself a simple old carburetor a very simple carburetor there's the fuel filter and an electric automatic choke this one works perfectly fine but if it ever does go out you can easily rebuild them or heck you can still get them from AutoZone. <laughs> Now let's say you wanted to upgrade the carburetor. For about 280 bucks, you could put a brand new Edelbrock on that. Work much better than the original one. You get more horsepower out of it too. You can do whatever you want with one of these old trucks. And strangely enough, the air conditioner still works on this old thing. And as you can see, pretty much everything is simple. There we have mechanical fuel pump. Bolts on with two bolts. A distributor system that can easily be repaired. And this is one of my favorites. Don't you hate it with newer cars when, well, your regulator's broken, but that's built into the alternator, so you gotta replace the whole alternator. Well, not in these old things. Here's the alternator, but here's the regulator over here. You can replace just the regulator if you have to. It's a separate piece. As we go inside, we can see it's old. We know that. It's an 81. And what do we have here? There's a bungee cord. Now why is there a bungee cord holding the shifter up? Well, there's a story behind that. It was sitting running in a garage with the trailer on the back. Without the bungee cord, it slipped into reverse gear by itself. As you can see, the bungee cord holds it up, so that won't happen. Because when it had the trailer on the back and it was inside and it slipped in reverse, this is what happened. The trailer jackknifed and smashed it in. But oddly enough, it didn't even break the tail light. So it comes pre-dented. Well, I guess you expect dents for a $2 truck. But check this out. The Sandy One's got the long bed. It just keeps going. You can throw a lot of junk in this baby. And because of that 300 cubic inch straight six, you can actually tow quite a bit. Now, you're not supposed to do this, but of course, for the $2 truck, who would care? I got a friend with one. He towed a 14,000 pound load behind him with this thing. It's not rated for that. And he said, uh, it was better going downhill and I like it when the wind was pushing from the back, <laughs> but the engine has the torque in order to pull that. And as you can see when we look under, the old frame, still solid as can be. 
They built these things back in the day. You can see it's even got dual exhaust, one on each side, a lot of rigging hair welding stuff on, but hey, it holds up. Now you might think this truck is old, but it's actually the seventh generation of the Ford pickup trucks. And it does have a four speed automatic transmission that's actually quite reliable. And since this is the classic pickup truck, it's not four wheel drive, it's just driving in the rear. It's a classic pickup truck with a big old differential in the back. Solid, reliable. But really, when you slam the hood, it's still a pretty sharp looking truck. I do have to say, this is two dollars well spent. Or even in his grandfather's day, when he bought it for three hundred dollars. That's still a pretty good deal. As we go back inside, yeah, it's got an aftermarket radio. They didn't come with these fancy Panasonic. But check this out. Needs fan belts, but check it out. The power windows still work. Now they go down a lot faster than they go back up. But they do still go back up slowly but surely. And really just listen to that engine. Hey, this thing's already gone at least 150,000 miles. Because in the old days, the speedometers only went to 99,999 and then go back to zero. So it's got either 150 or 250,000 on it. And yeah, when you put it in drive, it shakes a little bit. You get a little vibration here or there. You can feel the cab shaking somewhat. But really, it's a pan ultimate work truck. You don't care what happens to it. As previously mentioned, it comes pre dinged from the trailer swinging along. It also came with junk already in the trunk, or the bed, I should say. And the wheels and rims are certainly worth the $2 price. And it's something no modern pickup truck has, the class of being an old Ford pickup truck that's still rolling down the road. You can't buy that. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.